was Steve Jobs, and he came in and he got a tour of the facility, and they showed him this, and they showed him that. And finally, they brought him to the room where they had their personal computer called the, it was called the Alto. And they sat him down, and they walked him through all the things the Alto could do, and finally they came to the part where they showed him the graphical user interface, right? The idea that you could take the mouse and you would move the cursor, and if you wanted the computer to do something, instead of typing in the command laboriously on your typewriter, you simply clicked on the icon and it happened, right? And Jobs sees this, you know, and he's making very traditional, conventional computers back home in Cupertino or wherever he is. He sees this and he's never seen this notion before of using an, a mouse and, a, and an icon and they show it to him and he can't believe it. And he literally jumps up and starts waving his hands in the air and says, this is unbelievable. It's a revolution. This is the future of computing, right? And he's jumping up and he turns to him and says, why haven't you brought this to market? And these kind of very brainy PhDs <laughs> look at him and with kind of a puzzled expression. Market? <laughs> and he, he runs out of his, out of, and he pops into his car. I'm sure it was a Volkswagen Beetle. And he, <laughs> he drives down 101 back to his office, and he goes to his engineers, and he says, who are working on the next computer, which is going to be the Lisa. Remember the Lisa? And he says to them, stop. We're starting over. I know we're going to do this. You guys are going to do this traditional thing where you type in on the command line a little bit. No, 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 no. We're now going to do the graphical user interface. We're going to make an icon. You click on the icon, and that's going to do... And they look at him like, he's crazy. What are you talking about? You told us to do... I was wrong, right? We're doing it this way. And then he hops in his car again, and he goes to Palo Alto, and he meets with an industrial designer. And he says, I want you to make me a mouse. The guy looks at him. This kind of mouse? He's like, no, 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 no. A little thing that you can move the cursor around. You know, I just saw one at Xerox Park. It's amazing. It blew me away. But theirs cost $300. Ours can't be $300, it has to be $15. And it's got to work for like a year, but can you do it? And the guy says, yeah. And a couple years later, after the, the engineers, the software engineers have figured out how to do the graphical user interface, and after the industrial designer has done the mouse, those two things come together, and the product is the Apple Macintosh. Right? One of the most famous and iconic products in the history of Silicon Valley, and the product that launches Apple on a trajectory that it's still on uh, to this day. Well, like I said, that's one of the most famous stories in the history of Silicon Valley. But think about it in the terms, in the context of the story I just told you about RMA and about digital technologies in the, in the world space. The innovator in that story is Xerox Park. And they're the innovators because they have assembled a group of absolute geniuses and they've given them unlimited budgets and they've allowed them to roam freely over every aspect of the digital world until they come up with a series of absolutely brilliant inventions, right? That's what you get when you take a large group of PhDs and give them lots of money. You get all kinds of really, really brilliant ideas. But did they bring any of those ideas to market successfully? No. And why? Because if you give a lot of PhDs an unlimited amount of money, right, the one, and they will most certainly come up with lots of great ideas, but the one thing they will not do is come up with a product that you can sell on the market. Right? What was the one computer that came out of Xerox Park? It's called the Xerox Star. And it was the pride and joy of every one of those computer scientists. It had every bell and whistle you can imagine. It was the Lamborghini of computers. Do you know how much it cost in 1980? In 1980 dollars. $16,000. It lasted about six months on the market, and then it floated away. Now compare that to Jobs. Who is Jobs in 1981, 1980? He's a guy running a struggling computer company down the road. Does he have all those riches and massive research budgets? No, he's working on a shoestring. He's fighting for his company's life. He's trying to break into this huge, incredibly baffling, insanely competitive market, right? He's desperate. But what does that desperation give him? It gives him the right mindset for making real change and innovation happen. 
It allows him to build a culture that is based not on coming up with ideas, but in making good use of them.